All right. So I'm going to talk about uh, another breakout group that would not have been possible without Chai Hacknight. And actually, Derek, I realized the last time we presented on this was episode 299. And, well, a bit of a spoiler. <laughs> not too much has changed since then. <laughs> but, oh, well. Here's, here's a brief little update on kind of where we started, uh, what Chai Hacknight um, got us to, and what might uh, the future hold. All right, so back in 2013, oh my gosh, almost like 10 years ago, uh, the Chicago Justice Project had done a report um, to look at how the Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun-Times was uh, covering um, violence against women and then looking at how the, those two sources of news were um, you know, reporting on, on violence against women and comparing that to police reports, other uh, publicly available data to see you know, were the Tribune and sometimes over-reporting, under-reporting women against, uh, violence against women in certain parts of the city? What was the story there and the trend there? Um, so that was a really popular report. Right after that, then uh, Tracy Siska, who um, is founder and director of the Chicago Justice Project, um, you know, said, well, if we're doing it with those two sources, with the Tribune and sometimes, and just with violence against women, why don't we look more broadly across the Chicago media landscape? Let's look at other uh, news sources. Let's see how, how they are covering crime more generally. So can we do something larger looking beyond uh, just how the media is reporting um, about, about violence against women by looking at other sorts of crimes? So they started to do that. They started looking at beyond just the Tribune and sometimes looking at, you know, WBEZ, WTDW, all the other kind of major news outlets and looking at how all of them are covering crime. Um, you can imagine that if, if you're just constantly trying to keep up with all of the news sources um, and what they're covering, it became, if somebody was just doing it on their own, which is what they were doing, just having human volunteers go to these websites and checking them, it became way too onerous and way too difficult uh, to do that. So that was the impetus for Chicago Justice Project coming to Chai Hack Night. They needed a, a more sustainable, a better way of, of going about uh, collecting all these news articles across Chicago's uh, media landscape on how they were covering crime. So um, they came to Chai Hack Night. How we helped uh, the Chicago Justice Project was really in two uh, main ways. The first way was putting together a scraper. So instead of having human volunteers physically go to the Tribune's website or Sun-Times website, pull in all the news articles and so forth, wrote a scraper to automatically every two hours go to all those uh, news sites and, and pull them in. So we started that uh, in 2016, 2017. And in the past... Uh, what is that now, six years? We're now up to over 800,000 articles that we have scraped uh, from all the major Chicago media sources. So we had, now have a huge amount of data. Um, and then the other main thing that Chai Hack Night uh, helped with is you can imagine hundreds of thousands of articles trying to manually going through each one to see a... Is it about crime? And if it's about crime, what crimes is it about? And where are those crimes located? We were trying to get those kind of three pieces of, of information out, types of crime and any sort of location information. Um, you know, having somebody go through ten, tens or hundreds of thousands of articles was just way too much. So the other main piece that Chai Hack Knight helped with this project was putting together a machine learning algorithm using natural language processing to automatically go through um, all those articles and pull out what types of crime the article is reporting and any sort of location data. So um, we now have all that information for those roughly 800,000 articles. So lots and lots of data. Um, very briefly, uh, what, we've, what we're trying to kind of do with it eventually. So this is actually, <laughs> I said the exact same slide from that 
299th episode. <laughs> so not much has changed. But this was data that um, we had pulled from 2015. So we also kind of backfilled a lot of the um, articles from when we started in 2016, 2017. Um, and you can see, like, this is just a little snippet of, of what we think kind of the larger story is, right? So just looking at burglary, for example, you know, a lot of the me media, it appears to be uh, perhaps um, under-reporting where a lot of that uh, crime happens, where burglary happens, particularly like on the south side, but in the more affluent uh, parts of North Chicago, where it actually happens less, it gets reported a lot more. Right? So it's kind of a discrepancy in terms of how media is, is covering it. So this is what we are kind of trying to eventually work towards. But you can imagine with like 800,000 articles and just a huge mass of data, it's very, very difficult. The data is very, very messy. Um, so we are continuing to work on it these past few years. <laughs> and, and it's just kind of a never, never ending process. But uh, Tri Hack Night has gotten us this far, and we're hoping it will get us uh, even further. Um, and even as we have kind of worked on uh, that project and, and continuing to do bits and pieces of it along the way as we can. Um, Trihack Knight has continued to help uh, Chicago Justice Project in, in many other ways. Um, so just as a brief example, so Tracy Siska with Chicago Justice Project actually moved to Washington, D.C. a few years ago. So he's also kind of involved with, with that scene as well. And one of the things that they had wanted to do, um, which is kind of relevant for, for Chicago as well, D.C. also has a a gang database, and so they wanted a uh, way that people could just um, very easily and quickly uh, basically uh, submit a FOIA request to see if they are on that gang database or or not. Um, and so Chicago Trust Project again came to myself and, and Try Hack Night to see if we could put together a kind of easy form for uh, people to to do that. So that's one of the things that we had worked on um, as well in the last couple of years. So also just various other side projects that Chi Hack Knight has been able to help the Chicago Justice Project along the way. Um, but yeah, like I said, in, in the future here, we do have just a massive amount of, of data. So those 800 plus thousand articles, all the location data, crime data that goes along with it, it's like over two gigabytes. Um, and so we're also just looking for people and opportunities to figure out how, how to work with that data more and, and kind of do some more reports, visualization from that. Um, we also keep toying with the idea of doing some sort of like sentiment analysis, so also looking at not only how the media is covering crime, but in those articles then too, right, they'll often be reporting um, about uh, police, either police directly related to crime, uh, police abuse, that sort of thing, or just generally, you know, talking about the police being involved. Um, in reporting a crime, responding to a crime, something like that. So we're also looking to see if we can do some sort of sentiment analysis to see if the media, by and large, talks positively about the police or negatively about the police or is more neutral about the police. Um, so we're going to do that. And uh, as I kind of mentioned too, with all the data, we have a lot of data cleaning, which tells us that the machine learning algorithm that we did put together, it's good, it, it, it is pulling out some crime data, it is pulling out some location data, but it's oftentimes not the most accurate or most precise. So we know our, our model kind of needs some, some work and some tinkering, so we're also hoping to uh, improve that at some point and just make that uh, machine learning model better in the future. Um, so that is the status of the Chicago Media Project and Chai Hack Knight's involvement with the Chicago Justice Project. So thanks to all those people. These are just a few of the people who have been involved over the years. And uh, yeah, big thanks to Chai Hack Knight for 500 more episodes. <laughs>